Okay. Fifty two B from Boy Rami Barchama. How many lines up is that? It's uh, seven, eight lines. Right before the end of 52 B. Do we thank Hashem that we're able to learn Torah every day? And in this course of our learning, we should have basic English immediately. Okay, Boy Rami Barchama, Rami Barchama has a question. Rami Barchama is a uh, son-in-law of Rav Chizda, right? He's a, a friend of Rava. Just like this. Rava atzamis mina shedra v'golgailis mai. See, what happened was, there is a measurement of a quarter kav of bones, but we don't use that for a nazar. Because a nazar, in order to, for the nazar to need to redo his whole count, we were stricter. We said he needs to have half a cup of bone, not a quarter cup. Then we had another measurement where we said- Much this, more lenient. You need a, a half is more than a quarter. Right? Yeah, but the reason why we're going to be, it's more, it's more lenient. And the reason why we're gonna be more lenient is because it's, gonna, it's a more stricter law for the Nazar to have to, because we're not going to apply the laws of Tumma to the Nazar, that he should have to restart his whole count for just the quarter cup. Okay. Oh. He was going to, to, to be able to, to, to require that recount, he's going to need a half a cup, which is more lenient. You're right. Okay, now, one second. Next. Then we have another discussion. We have the, the spine and the skull. From the spine and the skull, we didn't mention what size they needed to be. Hmm. We just said the, the spine and the skull. So Rami Barham's question is, if you take bones from the spine and the skull, should we say, in those if they're removed from the spine, you collect it, would, do we say that if you have a half a cob, just like every other bone in the body, a half a cob would require the nazar to give off, to, to require the nazar to have to restart his count. Or do we say that because the spine and the skull is more strict, that it's only a quarter cob, like it is in other areas? Because the, the bones of the spine and the skull maybe have a stringency over the rest of the bones of the body that it will be only a quarter cup that will require the Nazar to recount. That's his question. Is, there, is it a different measurement when it comes to the spine and the skull? Is, is there a mention about why they're two different things? Um, I think it's considered like the main part of the corpse. The skull and the spine? Right. So let's take a look. Kiktani chazi kavat samis. When the Mishnah said a half a kav, let me take out those words. That's what I was referring to. Hechadi ik mishari varav. That's talking about the other bones. Now, by the way, there was another criteria, another uh, detail in those other bones, and that detail was that it needed to be the majority of the build, or the majority of the bones of the body. And when you collected those and it turned into a quarter cob, notice there was two uh, build and build. What was the first one? Build, majority of the build, which meant the, the two thighs and the and the uh what was the other and the hip or something. And the um and uh you would take the if if those bones were taken and they were put into a measuring thing and measured a, a quarter cob and it measured a half a cup, and it measured a half a cup. So then that would make the Nazar have to be started. But when it comes to the spine and the skull, that's more strict. Over there, you would only need a quarter of a cup. So regular bones, half a cup. The spine and skull, quarter cup. Maybe who made this distinction? So everything is a half a cup. 
Amarava, Rava says, Tashama, come and listen. Ashidravagulgailas. It says in the Mishnah clearly, the spine and the skull. In order to understand what Rav is saying, you have to make an assumption here. How big is the spine and the skull? Probably, spine and skull is probably already a, um, a quarter cow. The spine in the skull is probably a quarter cub anyway. So why do we need to say the spine in the skull independently? It's already a quarter cub. If the spine in the skull would have that tendency, there must be when you say the spine in the skull, because it really needs to be a half a cup, if it would be, right? So otherwise it would just say a quarter cup. If I'm getting that correct. What, he, what he's saying is, why would it have to be, once it's a reva, once it's a quarter cow, then why do you have to tell me that the spine and the skull give off impurity when they're intact? Even if they're not intact, it's a quarter cow that gives off impurity. In other words, the bones themselves, regardless of the, when it says the spine and the skull, it means that they're, the spine and the skull are intact. That's what it's talking about. So, so why do they have to be intact if they give up impurity by a quarter cup? They're anyways the quarter cup. So it must be that they don't give up impurity from a quarter cup. And, and the reason why they're giving up impurity is because they're intact. But a quarter cup of the spine and the skull would not give off impurity, which means that the spine and the skull have the same status as all other bones. Now, the only reason why we came to this conclusion is because we made an assumption that a spine in the skull would naturally be a quarter cub anyway. Since it's naturally a quarter cub anyways, then we asked, so why do you have to say is that they're intact? It's anyways, a quarter cub. We just, that's an assumption. We don't know that the spine in the skull are really quarter cub. But because we assume that they're a quarter cub, then we have a question. So why do you have to say it? It's a quarter cub anyway. Why do you have to say it's intact? It's anyways, so it must be, we're, we're concluding that it's just uh, the spine and the skull have the same status as all other bones. Kamara says, one second. Okay, now, where I read this Kamara was according to Teistris, who adds in a few words. I doubt your Kamara has it, but according to Teistris, what the Kamara now says is that, but Marukva says, that we're dealing with a spine in the skull that don't have a quarter, a quarter cow. That's Tyson's version of this You mean like the, whole, the, whole thing. the whole thing together? It's still not a quarter. It's still not, we're talking about it's smaller than that. It must, been a, really right? tiny, uh, it must be a baby or something. Yeah. Right. So if that's the case, um, it has a note on it. Yeah, I didn't go through the, the note, but I did, but did go through the dice first. Um, so the Gemara says, um, the Gemara now asks, okay, so Mar Ukva says that that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about where the spine and the skull had less than a quarter cut, less than a quarter cut. Um, and the reason why it says the spine in the skull is not be, it, it's has to tell me that even though it's less than a quarter cob, it still gives off impurity. So what would it tell me about the quarter cob? Quarter cob maybe would it also give off impurity if it's not intact, right? If it's intact, it gives off impurity even less than a quarter cob. If it's intact, if it's not intact, then even even uh, then even a quarter cob would give off impurity. 
maybe we, now we have an answer. It's smaller than a quarter power. And it gives us a purity. It's not like the other one, the bones. It's not like the other bones when it's intact. But it doesn't tell me now what if, what if it's not intact. If it's not intact, then maybe that would give off impurity at a quarter cow, not like the other bones continuing, not like the other bones. The Gemara says, but Rava was the one that asked the question. I'm a Rava. Rava was the one that was bringing this proof. But Rava Hudamar, now we read on the top, that this whole, this whole um, discussion was, how could he have asked this question? He himself said the same thing. And then the Gemara answers, Basar the Shama Me Mar Ukva. Now, over here it says Me Rabbi Akiva. But Taisra says that Mar Ukva was the one that gave the answer. And, and he said, but Rabbi also gave an answer like that. So how could he have ever asked the question? So we said, yeah, he gave that answer. After Mar Ukva gave him the answer, then he started to learn it differently. We had a question, why, uh, we had a question on the question. If you know the answer already, why do you ask the question? The answer is, is that he only knew the answer after someone told him the answer, but not beforehand. Okay. That's the shot, the way Tesis lends us. It says, uh, Rabbi Akiva and the rabbis and voices bring only with regard to one speaking voice. Yeah. Okay. There is the other way of reading this, is that it's, um, the Gemara says, after you heard from Rabbi Akiva, where we mentioned Rabbi Kiv before had some strict opinions, six strict opinions about. And after he heard from Rabbi Akiva, not so much the amount, just the fact that the spine and the skull would give up impurity even less than, even less than a. Uh, and everyone agrees that they don't give that. You know, just like, you know, it's less than a half a god. It's less than half a god. That's what we would come out with. Okay. Even if in total they amount to more than half a cloth, each individual piece. No, I think if, if there's two corpses combined, mm -hmm. if there's less than a half, then it doesn't help. Uh, right. Much. Okay. We don't have so a conclusion. Right now, we don't have a conclusion. No. One quarter. Right. Yeah. So if you have a mass grave, you really don't know. It's going, it's going to do what it is. Right. That was you that discussion over there uh, with the to the with the doctor that came in. Okay. That's what they, they said when they, they brought in this um, box of bones into the blacksmiths. They looked to see if there was a, a spine from, from one corpse and they didn't find it. So could a Kohen go to like the Auschwitz camp memorial? Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure how they do that, but I've, I have seen discussion on that. That kind of do have difficulties. Um, I think the, the they don't have to check the routes. I think there must be a leniency for them on the plane. But um, there were certain airlines that fly with bodies. Oh yeah, that, that's definitely yeah. that's a problem. They have to make sure that there's no oh, bodies yeah. in there. Yeah, it's, a, it, it's complicated. Okay. Yalal probably takes the, the thing. It could be a problem for Cohen of Yalal. Yeah. Okay. okay, unless there's some solution where they can make some, some sort of uh, yeah, division. Possibly, uh, this seems like there should be a way of doing it. Right. If there's a Pesach Tefach, then it doesn't go up. If there's a, uh, an area of the Tefach in between the corpse and some other uh, container, we're going to see later today, actually. Okay, Tashima.
come and listen. Another sort of another attempt to prove Rami Bahama's question. Okay, so it says like this: Shama Yaimer, etzem echad min ashedre min agolgalas. One bone, according to Shammai, from the spine or from the skull would give off impurity. So that's what Shammai says. What did the rabbi say? That it would need to be a quarter cow. See, we have our answer. Uh, the spine and the skull is only a quarter cow. Uh, that was a huge jump, but um, the Gemara says, Shani Shammai, the Kham, the Mach Mitre. One second. You don't know that just because Shammai says one bone, that means the rabbi say a quarter cow. Maybe Shammai says one bone, and the rabbi say a half a cow. The, the extreme, the polar extreme, one from one bone to not a quarter cow, but a half a cow. It needs to be even a large size, much more lean, much more lenient. The Gemara says, well, the, if that's what you want to say, so to say we now have a proof that the rabbis hold that it's only half a cow. And now we have an answer for the other side. Just one second. Maybe it's not so. Maybe the rabbis are arguing with Shammai. Shammai says one bone. The rabbis say, not one bone. But if it's a quarter cow, Maybe you have that in the word. I feel Maybe the rabbis would agree to that. That it would be. We really don't have an answer yet. Okay, I believe this is a brand new Gemara. Do they have like that new squiggle, the squiggle over here from Amr Rabbi Lazar? The new piece? Yeah. Amr Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Eliezer says, the Originally, the early sages said, some of them that chazi kavat samis v'chazi lugdam l'kol. Talking about the measurements here, there's two, there's two measurements that that you think is different for a nazar. Usually a revius of dam. That quarter, I don't know, pint, quarter pint of uh, of, um, of blood makes summa in a in a house. However, the nazar needs a half a pint, half a cup, mm. half a half a uh, mm. half a load. The um, the other measurement was usually a quarter cup of bones give off summa, but for the nazar it needs to be half a cup. Now this is the laws of the nazar you have to restart this whole thing. It needs to be a larger size. So, which, is, which means a lenient. Okay. So the early sages said that chazi kavat samis v'chazi lugdam l'kol. That's for everything. It has to be a half a kav of bones, and it has to be a half a lug. No, the, the drop the quarter thing. The quarter thing doesn't apply to anything. Not for a nazir, and not for tuma, not for truma, and not for kachim. Reivat samis v'reivadam a quarter of a bone, a quarter kav of bones, a quarter blood. Leilakol is not for everything. It's not for anything. That's one opinion. The other opinion said, that even a quarter applies to another. A quarter of a kav and a quarter of a and a quarter of a lug applies to the nazir that he's already going to shave and restart his count. Um, however, Bezdin shall achreim the later Bezdin Amru they said chazi kavat samis v'chazi lug dam lakal. That a half a half a cup of bones and a half a pint, half a lug of blood, that would apply to everyone. But if it's only a quarter, that's the chuma lakachim avalela nazar vaysa pesach. But not for a nazar, not for one that makes the that pace that becomes tame um, from this. That we're going to tell him that he can't do a carbon pesach. So in other words, they say that when that this is more of a rabbinic rule that a quarter of a cow should give off that impurity. We're not going to apply the laws of Tuma to the Nazar to restart his count into a person that wants to bring the current pace. We're not going to apply those rabbinic laws to him. 
we're going to say that only if he came in contact with a half a cow, that's when it would apply. But for everyone else, a half a cow, uh, for everyone else, a quarter cow is going to be sufficient to make him totally tummy. The Gemara says, how are we paskening like this best and afterwards? See, sometimes you can say that when I have a third opinion, two opinions that are arguing, I have a third opinion, the third opinion is going to be a majority. It's going to join, in one instance, it's going to join the, the strict opinion. In one instance, he's going to join the other one. So in each one, like in a Venn diagram, right, there's an overlap on, on each. So you say, well, for this, regarding this, this is the majority. Regarding this, this is the majority. The only problem is when it comes to, uh, when it comes over here, this is a third opinion. None of the, they didn't mention that there's a difference at all between a Nazar and, a, and everyone else, and Truma and Kachim. So this third opinion is totally a third opinion that has nothing to do with the first two opinions. So it's, there's no like overlap to say that this is, that the halacha should be like this. I'm Rabbi Yaakov Baridi. Rabbi Yaakovidi says, Malachi. That we have a tradition why we should have this ruling. It's not because we're going into the rules of when you have the majority and all of that. This is a special tradition that we heard that um, I don't know how the later opinions had the tradition and not the earlier ones, but Now is, that, is that a phrase that you use to represent that time period? Yeah. yeah. The, the, those were the last of the prophets. So when they said they heard from those prophets, it meant that was a tradition that went back to Misha. Okay. Al Elo Anazar Megaleach. Nazar will shave for the following. Now, you notice in the Mishnah, this was a few days ago, the Mishnah started off saying, on the following Tumas, the Nazar will restart his count. And it goes through the corpse and the kazais of the corpse and the 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 liquid the, the the liquid that comes out of the 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 corpse. You know, if it turns into a, a, a liquid or if it's the dust and the spine and the skull and the limb from the the, the corpse, etc. etc. Half the half a, a half of a, a measurement of bones, half a measurement of blood. Then it finishes off. On these, the nazar restarts his count. It started at the beginning on these, the nazar starts to count. Finishes on these. Now, right before the end, it says, um, and on a bone the size of a barley, only for touching. And these, the Nazar does, does this uh, count. Okay, so the, all the beginning ones, we're talking about um, entering into a house that had some of there. And the la only the last one, the bone, the size of, of a barley si a barley sized bone is only regarding touching and carrying. So the Gemara says, why do you have to say in the beginning that on these, on these, the Nazar, like what are you trying to exclude? Says coming to exclude that when we're talking about entering into a house with a impurity, that's all that's only talking about everything else, but not the bone size of the barley. For the bone, the size of the barley, it has to be touched. And then why does it have to say again in the end that and on these the nazir restarts his count? That's the Mu'ute Evan Askuchas. There's a big discussion over here about what is Evan Askuchas. But um, I guess what it means is that there's a uh, stone that's an overhang for some reason. Usually we say that if there's something hanging on, if there's a corpse and the Nazar under the same roof, the Nazar would have to restart his count. That's normally what we say. For some reason, but this stone that's hanging over, so we say that uh, the Nazar does not need to restart his count. 
and I'm not sure why. Do you have a, a note in there why? Uh, maybe because it's a stone. No, I don't think it's the that. I think it's referring to um, that usually we say that certain things that 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 cause tumma to spread, but because this is a, a natural material, because it's a stone, it's not going to cause the tumma to spread the same way. I think that's what it means. At least according to this opinion, uh, there was someone um, had a discussion. But Mitzvah Bacher was talking to the Rebbe. I don't remember the story. He said, "What if the he puts on tefillin on his arm and on his head? What if the person doesn't have an arm? Put it on his other arm." So then, uh, then what's the child dancing? Then the Rebbe said, "What if he doesn't have a head?" And the person was the, the boy was trying to think, like, what does he do? Okay. <laughs> um, if branches protruding from a tree or stone jutting out of the wall serve as a tent over a Nazarite in a corpse, Nazarite need not shave or negate his Nazarite for some period. Now, why? Well, so the, I'm thinking because, because no. They're under the same roof, but usually under the same roof, that's a problem. But over here, I think because it's a natural. Um, uh, it won't be under the same roof because of how it kind of like the branches over the Nazar. No, the, both the Nazar oh. and the corpse are under the same roof. Oh. Read it again. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jeff wants to know does that buffer you? They didn't have Yechidas when my uh, my days. And we had that, that group Yechidas. Remember those group, the group Yechidas? Did you ever go to that? All the Bar Mitzvah Bacharim would go in together. It wasn't like private. It was like a group of like 100. Bar oh, really? Yeah. So, the Chatsi Kavat Samis. And a half a cob of bones. We're going back to the Mishnah to discuss that a half a cob of bones would give off impurity uh, in a house. Okay. Katsi kavatsamis in a half a cob of bones, yes. Ray vatsamis, quarter cob, like, no. Echidami, what's the case? Elaim adispu atsamis kisaira. Are we talking about that there's a bone the size of a barley? So you, you told me that a bone the size of the barley already gives off impurity. So why does it have to be a, a, a quarter cup? Pesos has a very strong question on this, and it's an obvious question. But you're mixing me up. The half a cup had to do with giving off impurity in a tent under the same roof. The single bone was only if you touched it. But what are you telling me that we're, when that's not even what we're talking about? Anyway, yeah. so, but the Gemara answers this. Ella Dakmach says, no, we're really over here talking about touching. And that's why. Um, so, so Ella Dakmach we're talking, we're talking about that the bones were ground into flour, like Kemach. And so there is no intact bone the size of a barley grain. It's totally um, ground up. Okay. My Gemara is missing the, um, the two dots here to make a new piece. But I added it in, in pencil. Is that just do, you, a do you have it? Yeah, it's an older Gemara. It's good in a lot of other ways, but it doesn't have every uh, dot. If there's a limb that has a, a limb off a corpse or a limb, 
uh, uh, that was amputated off a uh, living person. And on this limb, there's the size of a, there's enough flesh. See, the bone itself won't give off impurity in the house. That would need to be a half a calf for the Nazar. Here we're talking about that it's only one bone. But on this bone, there's also flesh and sinews. And there's enough flesh that if this would be attached, it would have been able to heal. It would regenerate, right? And it would, it would be able to heal. You take all the flesh off the bone, it's not gonna heal. But if there's still flesh there, it would, uh, enough, it would be able to heal. So then that's considered a full limb and it would give off impurity in the, under the same roof. So the Gemara now says, mai. if there isn't enough flesh, so what's the halach? Now the halach is obvious. You just told me you need to have enough flesh. Why, now it's, but if there isn't, what would the halacha be? So what the Gemara is asking is, enough flesh would give off Tome in a house. But let's say there isn't enough flesh. What about touching it? I know in a house it's not going to give off tumma, but what if about touching it? Maybe touching it would be would be would give off tumma by by contact. Now the Gemara is going to ask later that what's the size of this? If it's the size of a of a barley, then touching it of course gives off tumma. But wait for that. First we have touching this. Rabbi Yechonan Amar, touching it ain't a nazar that the nazar won't have to restart his count. Rabbi Shlakish Amar nazar megaleya chaleim. Rabbi says that he does. Rishlakshis is going to be strict about this bone that does not have enough flesh on it. I'll tell you why. It says in the beginning, says clearly that if there, it needs to have enough flesh. The only thing is that I could have said that that's only talking about the give up some in the house. Rebbechanan understands that even touching it would not give up impurity unless it has enough flesh on it. Rabbi Shem ben Lakishaymer, Megaleach, he says that it does give up impurity and therefore the nuts has to recount for this bone, this limb that doesn't have enough flesh, by touching it, because it doesn't say it in the next Mishnah. You see, if you look to the, um, to the left, you have the Mishnah on, that's coming up tomorrow. It says that there are certain things that the Nazar does not have to restart. And in that list, it does not have the bone that doesn't have enough flesh on it, the limb that doesn't have enough flesh. See, if it's not in that list, that means that the Nazar does have to restart his count. Right? There's a list of the ones that the Nazar does, and there's a list that the Nazar doesn't. Now we have one in the middle. Rabbi Yechonin says, well, the Nazar doesn't because it's not in the list of the Nazar does. And Rishlaka says it's not in the list that the Nazar doesn't. That means the Nazar, the Nazar has to. Rabbi Yechanan Amalach, Kol Hecha Damashim Mechlala, like Tanim Seifa. Rabbi Yechanan says, doesn't have to say it in the Seifa. We already got it from the, uh, from the Reisha. The Reisha, the first part of the Mishnah. When it says Seifa and Reisha, it means the Mishnah, if it would have been combined, the whole chapter, it would have been a beginning and an end. Here we would say Mishnah one, Mishnah two, but they call it the beginning and the end. So Rabbi Yechonin says it doesn't have to say it in the end, where it lists all the things that the Nazar doesn't have to restart his count because we understood it from the beginning of it. Gemara says, "Oh, really?" I'll give you an example of something that it that we understood from the beginning of the Mishnah, but nevertheless, it listed it in the end where says you don't have to restart. It says Hassam, over there it needed to say it. We're talking about the half a kav. It says in the ratio that a half a kav, the Nazar has to, of bones, the Nazar has to restart his count. That would imply less than half a kav, a quarter kav, the Nazar doesn't have to. But in the Seifa it says a quarter kav, the Nazar doesn't have to. 
Why do I have to say it? We understood that from when you told me yes. We understood that if it's not that, that it would be no. It says we actually, we didn't understand that because Elav Revat Samis, if not for that state, statement that a court of Kav, he doesn't have to, I would have thought that even touching it would be, um, would he wouldn't have to. It's only on if it's under the same roof that he doesn't have to. But if he touches the bones that are less than a, a, a half a cob, they're a quarter cob, he still will have to. So that's why it was important to list it over there because over there it was saying on the on the tenth on the under the same roof that he won't need to restart his count. Mark tries again to ask on Rabbi Yechanan. What about Vachatsi Lugdam? Says that a half a lug of blood under the same roof, the Naz has to restart his count. We can understand from that that it has to be a half a cup. If it's not a half a cup, then he doesn't have to restart his count. But if you look at the next Mishnah, it says that he doesn't have to restart his count if he's under the same roof with a quarter of a, 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 a uh, with a quarter of a lug of blood which means that you are restating things that you that was obvious from the race. You're restating it in the Sefer. So why don't you restate the, um, the, uh, the limb missing the flesh? That's what we're talking about. Over there, we have an important reason. Because Rabbi Akiva is strict over there. But the reason why it's saying it is because we're negating the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. Otherwise, you're right. We weren't about to say it. I'm Rabbi. Okay. Um, I, now the Gemara goes to the most basic question of this whole discussion. We're talking about a bone that doesn't have flesh on it, or doesn't have enough flesh on it. We are Rabbi Yechanan holds that the Nazar does not have to restart his count from touching it, and Rishlakis says that he does have to restart the count. Hi, Averman Amei What are you talking about? What is the case? If there's a barley size, my time with Rabbi Yechanan. What's going on? Why does Rabbi Yechanan say that he doesn't have to restart? Clear Mishnah. Bone the size of a barley. Nazar becomes tummy by with contact. He has to restart. So maybe we're going to say we'd less be at some concern. So we'll say that it's not the size of a barley. My time with Rish Lakish. So how could Rish Lakish say that he does have to restart? Amalach Rish Lakish. Rish Lakish would tell you, Loilam the less be at some concern. You know what? We're talking about such a small bone that it, it does not have a, the size of a barley. But nevertheless, we have a verse that the, the Torah includes it. The Tanya was taught in a b'risa. B'risa quotes a pasuk. You want to get, get me a chumash? So this is... Um, like the Parshas Parah, remember? Parshas Hukas. So, chapter 19, and it's verse um, 16. Verse, uh, the, 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 it starts off, the section starts off like this. This is the law regarding a man that dies in a tent. Anyone entering the tent and anything in the tent will be ritually impure for seven days. Any open vessel, which is no seal fast, becomes ritually impure. Now, Anyone who was in an open field and touches a person who was killed by the sword or a corpse or a human bone or touches the human bone or a grave will be ritually impure for seven days. Okay, so we have over here a bunch of examples of how the person would be ritually impure. We said, is in an open field, touches a person who was killed by the sword or a corpse or a human bone, or a grave, okay? So the, the Bryce is gonna go through explaining why I need those examples. Each one is gonna be teaching me something. It's referring to a, I think it's gonna kind of referring to an enclosed grave or something. So it starts with, okay. Al-Pnei on the face of the field, in an open field, this is someone that goes on top of over the corpse. 
doesn't say he touched him. It doesn't say he touched him. It just says he walked over him. Right? He's in an open field. The halal, a corpse. I'm sorry, halal cherev, it says. Open field is a closed field. Yeah, well, it, does, it doesn't actually say in the Hebrew an open field. It just says on the face of the field. Ah, okay. So that meant he went over the face of the corpse on the field. It doesn't have to be the face either. He went over the corpse. But halal, so halal cherev is someone that was killed by the sword. So now we're talking about the person that was killed. Ze'ever menachai, diyesh lahal eserucha. This is referring to, this example is referring to someone that lost the limb while he was alive, but, it, but, the, but that limb has enough flesh in it that it would have been able to heal had it been attacked. Cherev, when it says about the sword, that's coming to tell me something, a very important halacha, that while the sword is attached, while the sword is, is touching the corpse, the person touching the sword not only becomes a, not only becomes tame, but he even becomes the same tuma as the sword, which is an avi, avi, uh, uh, ava tuma. The corpse itself is called avi ava, but it becomes an ava tuma, becomes a, the, the very highest level, lowest level, the highest, the, the most severe level of impurity. So always nice that a dueling. Ah, it's the Ooh, sword. Whoa, it's the other whoa, guy. this is a family shear, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he immediately, Becomes tummy also, right? Yeah. He's killed him. Yeah, if he dies, I'm fine. Right. Otherwise, he. Oh, he, oh he, what if he goes off and dies? Yeah, no, then it's not tummy. It's only while the sword is touching the corpse. Oh, it's the corpse. It's the right. Yeah, sure there are certain types of, of cuts, and on the, on the, we learned this, that the person is considered dead immediately. So the tumma starts immediately. Sure, like I think like, like it cuts off his head or something, you know, that even though maybe it's still some more motion or some sort, but it doesn't matter. It's considered dead. Okay, a mace or a corpse. This is talking about a limb that was removed from the corpse, which also gives stuff to him. Adam or a bone of a man. What is this referring to? Is that Reva Thomas is referring to the quarter cop? Ibe cover or the grave is that sasam. This is referring to an enclosed grave. Now, the special halach is with an enclosed grave that um, if it's enclosed from all sides, then the tumma will go off, will go out, not only over the directly over the corpse, but it would also go out from other parts of this coffin uh, of this grave that that are not directly over the corpse, even though there's no corpse directly on them, but the whole, entire grave. If it's in a sealed container, it becomes the tumma goes out of it as if the whole thing is the corpse. Like if it's closed by a fence? No. Mm -hmm. Talking about enclosed, like entirely sealed. Like in a um, in a container. Like a coffin? Yeah. Then what spreads out where? So uh, normally yeah, yeah, this is it spreads out to the so the edges, so the dimensions, of the, the dimensions of the container, right? That's a kever sussum. So the whole coffin it gives off tumma as if the whole coffin is the corpse. Dhammer Mar, the master taught, tumma by kas vila, kas viyaredis. That the, the tumma goes up from every side of this, every edge of this um, of this coffin, even if it's not directly above the corpse. Okay, now. That was talking about um, going over the corpse or any of those items as a as as a roof over it, like in other words, making it as if the person is the tent over the corpse. That's how the tumma would go. Bilugabi Nagia, all of this is Rishlak is coming to tell us that there's a special halacha that touching this bone, even though it doesn't have the size of a barley, is going to give up impurity. When it comes to touching, Rav Yudha says Tanya was taught in a brisa. Quote the same pasuk. No, oh, I'm sorry, it's not the same pasuk. It's is it is this also verse sixteen? What does it say over there? 
This is verse 18? 19. 19. Okay. This Pasuk is referring to this. It says, um, what they need to do for the impure person, it says they have to, they take the uh, red heifer, put it, the ashes in a vessel, and then the rich, a ritually pure person should take hyssop, dip it into the water and sprinkle it on the tent and on all the vessels and on all the people that were in it. And on anyone who touched the bone, the killed person, the corpse or the grave. Then we go through the list again. This is discussing the purification process. In the pur purification process, it says you have to sprinkle the water on anyone that touched what? It goes to the, the list. Before we were talking about the person becoming Tame when he's an, as a tent over it. It didn't say that he touched. Um, actually, he used the term feel touch as a person, but it, all of that was referring to the tent. Now we say, when it says anyone that touched the bone, that's referring to a bone the size of a barley, or the corpse. This is talking about a limb that was removed from a living person, amputated, but you, but you don't have enough flesh on it to give off the, that impurity. You don't have enough flesh in it that it would heal. Nevertheless, touching it gives off the impurity. Or a corpse, this is referring to a limb that comes off the corpse. Or the grave, this is very interesting. This is referring to an old grave that was there before Matan Taira. Yeah. Before Matan Taira, you see, um, this is according to the opinion that the graves of the non Jews don't give off impurity. But anything that was before Matan Taira does give off impurity. It's only after Matan Taira that became a distinction between the Jews and the non Jews how much the impurity would be. But the old graves still have that impurity. Is, uh, I guess it goes like one step down that they don't give off impurity um, as, in, as a tent, at least according to this opinion. Touching, I think, still does. Okay. So, hi, Aver Menamei Sechidami. Notice that when it said the, the limb of the corpse, what's the case? Are we talking about that there's a bone? You already said a bone. And this year, we're deriving this from the word. Um, you already said the bone. It must be that it doesn't have the bone. That was the long proof for Rish Lakish to tell us that a bone that was taken off, a, a limb that was removed from a corpse, even if it doesn't have enough to enough flesh that it would heal, nevertheless, it gives off impurity through contact. The truth is that it's talking about that the bone does have the size of a barley. Then why do you have to say it? You're right, you don't have to say it when it comes to contact, but say it when it comes to lifting it up, if, even if a person lifts it up with a shovel. So he wouldn't have become tame because he didn't touch it directly. I just moved it with the shovel. But nevertheless, because he lifted it, even though he didn't touch it directly, so that also would give him the tumma, even, even though it doesn't have enough flesh, but because it's the bone the size of a barley, that would also give off impurity, as if it's contact. Okay, let's leave it over here. Can we have no, no, the piece of paper the Mishnah. Yeah. Okay, have a good Shabbos, everyone.